what is up you guys walking back here to another video i'm trying out a new rig system here so bear with me uh, i'm going to turn the led lighting down a bit but my name is jeremy welcome back here to sergeant tank on the youtube channel for more about us in regard to other information and other links you can go ahead and check it down in the description below so the first thing i wanted to make mention of is with regard to our big auction here in the grand rapids michigan market uh, give me a thumbs up if audio is okay. I also have a shotgun style mic that I'm utilizing in this rig system. So if you guys are just, uh, if it sounds muffled or whatever the case might be, uh, go ahead and let me know if you don't mind. But uh, this coming Saturday, October the 27th, starting at 9.30 a.m. here in the Grand Rapids, Michigan market, I'll go ahead and link that information down for you guys so you can check it out for more information one of the largest if not the largest um, auctions in the uh, Michigan market so besides the ones that happened in Detroit uh, I would anticipate this one because of the awareness and getting it out there my guess would be in comparison to the one back in the springtime uh, the one back um, uh, in, in previous ones is um, right around a thousand bags between livestock and plants and so forth let's see all right so again just um just uh bear with me a minute here um still working on a few things here logistically with this layout so give me a thumbs up uh if audio is okay for you guys and um Looks like Dank Tanks is in the house. Frank Dominguez, hello. Uh, no text again. Um, all right, so let me know for the folks here that right now in comparison to the other live streams I've done utilizing my cell phone, out of a one out of 10, be brutally honest, right now the way it stands without changing anything, I want a one out of a 10 for audio and a one out of 10 for uh, video um, and I want your honest feedback um, you guys it, without testing these things I don't know um, it, it, give me just put V for video and then give me a score 10 being the best one being uh, this sucks and same thing for audio you can just put a with a number next to it that would help me out um, but yeah so let's go ahead and flip the camera around and I think I think uh, Frank here is being uh, being generous, but I appreciate that, Frank. Uh, we got Bentley in the house. How you doing? Eight out of ten, right on. All right, so a lot of this stuff that you're seeing here is going to be actually going into the auction. Um, we do have a few limited quantities available of certain uh, livestock availability over tank.com if you guys want to check it out um, but again anybody new to the channel I appreciate you um, hanging in there with me as we just kind of go through here oftentimes this is a real busy time uh, especially because of my involvement with our local club um, so oftentimes I don't have a, a ton of time right now because with preparation and so forth with the big auction that's coming up here uh, this Saturday. My focus is first and foremost uh, through locality, dealing here locally in our club. And I think most of you guys that have been following me for any period of time are already aware of that anyway. Uh, but in case that you're not, um, there's a lot of different uh, uh, playlists and videos for you guys with much more information. Um, as you can see here, we this is uh, the largest of the three fish rooms. So we currently are operating three fish rooms. We currently operate um, over 110 gallon, um, or I'm sorry, over 110 active uh, systems, anywhere ranging from uh, two and a half gallons all the way up to 300 gallon stock tanks. So um, if there's anything that pops out, um, anything that you guys want to see. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on here. Like I said, I have lots of video um, in live streams I've been bringing you guys updates with. As updates do come available, I'll go ahead and let you guys know. We also have um, a meetup in the Hoffman Estates slash Chicago, Illinois area, and that is November the 3rd, which is a Saturday. So first week in November, 
and I can go ahead and also add the information for you guys down in the description if you want to meet up with um, a few of us and uh, and hang out. So let's go ahead and see what we got going on in chat. Um, I'd have to drop back to the older live streams for previous, but I would say the best thing is the sound uh, of the fish room is pretty low compared to your voice. Audio balance is really good. Right on. Uh, Jeremy Fryer, how you doing? Uh, Darren, hello. All right. All right. So let's head over real quick. Um, I'll show you guys the other second fish room and so yeah again you guys I'm just testing some of this stuff out so what I'm gonna do is actually flip around the light so this is a rig system here uh, the light was on me and now it's currently on the the uh, the systems here so what you're looking at here is some of the Limia Vitata. Uh, these guys will be going into auction. Various ram's horn snails, which we keep balanced in just about every ecosystem. We got some black bar antlers here, one of my favorites. Over here, these guys aren't breeding true, so that's why you have to classify them as Blue Dream slash Fantasy Blues, um, because they are actually uh, kicking out some inconsistencies with the lineage which I'll be working on I obtained these out of uh, source in Colorado um, up here we have some more black bar endlers uh, these are a very uh, uh, uncommon strain these are actually a collection point from Sam Marcus these are the Xenotoka duadrioi which is a live bearing species a lot more information on uh, goodyids and so forth down uh, for you guys in playlist if you want to check it out over here we got some Neocaridinia heteropoda. I've shown these off before. These are a carbon really strain. Uh, what else? This is a colony of Pelvicromus pulker. Um, on third generation in this tank. So you see there's a second generation there. And then third generation is being protected right now which you won't be able to see it uh, by the parents so these are paradise fish you can see male up there with the bubble nest I've done videos on these guys um, because of the ambient lighting we're going to be getting that reflection um, but anyway, so I've talked about these guys. These are, uh, for me anyways, uh, they're not a difficult species, um, to spawn. I think most, most, uh, labyrinth species are actually pretty, pretty simple. Uh, the key thing is utilize like half inch, uh, styrofoam. That's my biggest tip for you. Um, works, you know, nine times out of 10. So I've bred hundreds of those. I've bred bettas before. They just take up a lot of uh, a lot of uh, tank space. We got some Melitania picta. These are a new rainbow, uh, of course, a Gary Lang um, lineage here. And then these are some Pelvicromus taniatus down here in this system. Uh, I got a female over here, which is part of that same lineage. Uh, these are some diamond tetras up here. And one of the key things you can always tell with a tetra, let me kick this light off. I think it's just causing more of a reflection than anything. Um, so males right here, they'll always have that extended... Um, between the dorsal, uh, pectoral, those extended rays. And how you identify a tetra is just in front of the uh, um, 
If I said uh, caudal, I meant to dorsal, but anyways, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, just in front of the um, the caudal fin there, about an eighth an inch, if it will show, there's going to be that little extra finnage up there. I'll tell you, you always can identify when you're dealing with Tetris. Um, if you guys weren't aware of that. Uh, these are my... Uh, offspring here. We got three of the uh, funnel of pen chicks gardener. I have talked about before um, Evan what's going on, buddy? Uh, let's see <sighs> What else bunch of Aresius wild ray down there which I've done videos on um, Probably one of the larger most of my breeding videos. I have several thousand views on most of those um, Which I will get back into that uh, later this year, first apart and next year, I'll start focusing back on um, doing breeding projects. And uh, yeah, I go from there. So let's see. We got KG in the house. How you doing? Uh, Frank Dominguez, a nice jacket. Well, I appreciate that. The Aru too, yep. Yep, they are very nice, um, Bentley. Um, been getting a lot into rainbows. So currently I have the Melitania Picta. Um, I got the um, Goiter River. I have, um, I got the, uh, your Australians, what else, um, the, uh, Wapoga, the Red Laser, I have those, and, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy, as most people follow me, uh, I've talked a lot about the importance of utilizing acrylic spawning mops in conjunction with, uh, various plantage in order to obtain good yields in production when it comes to breeding, but, I mean, I could write a whole book just on utilization of spawning mops alone. Um, one of my favorite aspects of the hobby, and as I've shared this before, if somebody asked me what is one thing um, that you would keep if you had to get rid of everything else in your fish room with regards to a certain repertoire when it comes to breeding uh, tools, and that would be spawning mops. I would keep those all day because you can use them for so many different things if they're implemented appropriately. Uh, down here we have uh, a group of filament barbs. I uh, bred lots of these guys, so there's a reverse trio in here. I will do a video for you guys at some point in the future uh, once I get the time to do it. These guys um, do breed very uh, similar to uh, rainbow fish, however, um, there there is some differences in there as well. So uh, the adhesive bonding with the eggs and the embryos, they don't adhere very well to the spawning mop, but if you do it appropriately, um, you can get uh, really nice yields out of them. But I'll have to do a video at some point in the future. Uh, let's see. All right. Yes, Bentley. Um, I'm fortunate enough in our market uh, where we have a lot of uh, local breeders um, where um, I can get good genetic lineage, as most of you guys are aware. When it comes to obtaining good genetic lines, um, and I'll talk about this at some point later on in a future video, um, about the importance of not stressing yourself out if you're getting into breeding. Um, outside of the realm of live bears, um, specifically outside the realm of live bears. Not that you still don't deal with the same issues, but you have to wean through a lot of the very weak genetic lineage. Um, and I'll have to go through some of the adaptation and conditioning 
um, that has worked for me over the years from testing various methods. But I think it's important for certain individuals to realize just because you have a spawn, uh, you know, of a hundred, let's say, whatever it might be, you may only end up with five or ten percent yield um, after a month. I mean, a lot of these species, the critical time frame is the first two weeks. Um, rainbow fish are pretty hardy, but when you start getting into like the uh, Cynodonis, like your Lucipennis, your Multipentatus, <coughs> um, certain Tetras, Barbs, um, that type of thing, some killifish. Um, the the attentiveness and the care that go into it, you may think, excuse me, you may think that everything's going well uh, that first week, week and a half, and then all of a sudden something happens. Uh, that's why I talk about the importance of uh, ensuring uh, redundancy when it comes to having systems. So let's say I have, you know, 75 systems in here. I'm going to have out of those 75 systems, two or three active systems going of each one of those um, genetic lines. A lot of that goes in conjunction with selective breeding, um, calling, that type of stuff. So there is a science that goes behind it when you're looking at producing long-term effective genetic lineage, not just something that somebody keeps um, for a shorter period of time and no knocking on local fish stores or anything like that but there's a big difference between keeping something for a couple of weeks versus keeping something for five or six years down the road uh, let alone having um, good genetic lineage generations down the road and that is a focus for us and what I've been doing for um, close to 14 years um, I keep looking up here I'm not sure why that's actually my LED light so bear with me this is a new rig system um that i'm utilizing i got a shotgun mic um a led i actually have two leds and then my phone is right here with the camera on this side which is kind of messing with me with regard to orientation uh we got michael in the house my hi how you doing yep bentley Yep, I think you just um, reiterated what I was just mentioning there. Um, most species, uh, especially with small fry, um, I would agree. I mean, that first month um, can definitely be uh, uh, the most critical time frame. And like I said, you know, what I try to encourage people with, especially if they're first getting into it, if it's rainbow fish, killifish, whatever it might be, uh, just be patient with it. Um, you know, if you end up with let's say 20, um, 20 eggs from uh, a spawn or something like that. I'm just throwing out easy for easy uh, calculation. You may end up after that first month um, with three or four offspring, unfortunately. And you could be doing what you think is everything is right and everything could be going smooth. That's why I always encourage to have uh, redundant systems in place in case the unfortunate event something happens uh, with regard to fluctuation and a lot of it goes into successful yields is starting out um, the appropriate uh, areas for what you're actually holding these specimens of fish uh, so what I mean by that is um, starting out with like a tray system and then you slowly start going up because what you want to do is ensure that you're not only feeding the appropriate live foods with regard to what that species is to ensure that they're getting the appropriate diet and they're able to actually consume uh, whereas they're not too large um, or even too small so again you have to find a balance there and then also ensuring that they're able to uh, locate the food because if they are very small and I think oftentimes too people start feeding too soon and that can contaminate the tank so again there, there definitely is a balance that goes into um, if it was that easy, then everybody would be doing it. Um, unfortunately, this is my sole focus and what keeps me going in the hobby, as most of you guys are aware, um, with that regard. So I've bred um, just about every family of fish, and my goal is um, to have grandmasters when it comes to within the next seven years, um, which is about 450 different species. 
Uh, so basically this next coming year I plan on breeding between 50 and 60 different species. Last year I bred close to 40 species um, or this year and um, but yeah so I never really tracked before that but now that uh, I'm part of uh, the Breeders of War program which I've talked to you guys a lot about before I've done videos. Um, if you guys are watching up to this point you can definitely check it out. I can add those links for you down in the description uh, with that regard but uh, yeah, so we got Charlie in the house. Hello. Uh, real uh, reels tanks that I did really good with my first runs were rainbows. I got a hunt, hundreds. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Island Queen is wondering if I went uh, to the aquatic experience. Nope. Um, KG is wondering as far as the biggest yield found in spawny mops. Um, when you say yield, are you just talking about the embryos themselves, the eggs that are actually adhered to the mop? Or are you talking with regard to um, overall maintaining that production? Because you have to think about viability. Uh, a lot of the times that they're just, a lot of them don't get fertilized appropriately. And that just takes time with the making sure that the parents are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but as far as viability with, re with, with regard to that, I would say um, I haven't pulled the mops in about two days, but I would say between my, um, probably my filament barbs uh, would be the biggest yields that I can get um, if it's done appropriately. And again, there is a lot of tips and tricks that go in with it. You may get one or two eggs, but if you know what to look for and the times to do it appropriately, uh, you can get anywhere and upwards of 50 or 60 plus. Um, but now as far as how many of those are actually viable and how many make it, I don't want ge uh, weak genetic lineage with anything that I'm dealing with. Um, and you have to wean out those. Um, that's what ruins the hobby is if people are providing things that are just weak. And I'm not even talking about from a uh, deformity standpoint. I'm talking about just weak genetics where slight, even slight fluctuations they can't handle. And um, I'm all about adaptation and conditioning my species, no matter what it is, in order to adapt to a certain range of water parameters within reason. Um, and that just takes time. Uh, that doesn't happen overnight. That takes oftentimes uh, years uh, to be able to produce and get to the point. That's why I don't sell probably 80% of what you see here in the fish room. I don't offer that for sale. Uh, the biggest thing for me is implementing and practicing what I preach with regard to redundancy. And what I mean by that is I want to provide locally in case I ever want to go back to that same line, which I've done plenty of times, let's say I get out of something and I've been breeding it for X amount of time, I want to be able to go back and obtain that lineage down the road, if that makes sense. Um, and I would rather do that rather than having to trust in the source to ship me something back. I'd rather first deal local, get my genetic lines out there, ones that I have personally bred and raised up, get those out there, and um yeah so but bentley said i have to set up oh this rig system uh uh let's see here i have to set up five or so 10 gallon tanks this weekend gotta dial up my fry raising room space right on all right you guys well again anybody else is popping in here i appreciate it not too many with us here today and that's fine uh if you guys are watching this in the replay make sure you check everything out down in the description below about the importance of local clubs especially this time of the year by far my favorite time of the year not only supporting a local market local clubs people coming together in the community um, with that regard and we have a big auction uh, coming up here again Saturday October 27th it starts at 9 30 is pre-registration it's open to public auction so you don't even have to be a paid member in order to buy or sell take advantage of that 
And I am very confident with those individuals that would even come and show up that they would, a lot of them uh, end up becoming members because they see not only how important it is, how you can get involved and support in different ways, but just the amount of opportunities in meeting other uh, Aquarius along the way. So I definitely enjoy carrying this conversation with you guys right down in the comment section after this is uploaded. And with that being said, you guys, as always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. And we'll talk to you guys right back here on the next one.